But uh, I did read a, a movie news article today, and it featured Keanu Reeves somehow. Is up? There's a upcoming movies working on. It's a comedy. Yeah. And um. Yeah, and if in one of his co-stars is Jim Carrey. So that could go either way, I suppose. Fancy those two working together? I I was like, wait a minute, are you serious? (laughs) God. Exactly, they're the perfect balance. Maybe, maybe it would be like this buddy comedy thing, like Bill and Ted meets Dumb and Dumber. It could work. <laughs> if Keanu Reeves is ready to hold, grip onto that, you know, 90s dude, stupid slacker, druggy, shaggy from Scooby-Doo side of his acting. Personality. He's gonna be eventually doing Ted again, because they're still working on Bill and Ted's so there you go, maybe this is him trying to slip back into those shoes. Which is a shame, because yeah. it seemed like he was like finally starting to get really well put into the action world after The Matrix. I mean, not after mm-hmm. The Matrix, but after The Matrix kind of left him trying to do good action movies and sort of slumming along, you know? It seems like he, his career in action was picking up, and now he's moving right on to comedy. It seems weird. You know what I mean? Right. Right. It's gonna... There's a film coming out next year called The Bad Batch. It's a... Oh, this is right, that's right. It's a dystopian love story in Texas, Wasteland, and set in a community of cannibals. That's a comedy? That sounds like a really dark comedy. Fucking Danny DeVito style, not Jim Carrey. I believe it's a romantic comedy. The darkest okay. comedy Jim Carrey ever did was fucking, I don't know, The Cable, cable guy. guy? Maybe a series of unfortunate events if you really stretch yourself. Oh, definitely maybe a, a series maybe, of unfortunate maybe, events. He doesn't do dark Maybe I read that wrong. He, he does, like, maybe it's not a comedy. Slapstick comedy. Maybe I didn't, maybe I read that wrong. It's not a comedy, it's a love story. But it has a in it. Exactly. Jim Carrey's attempts at um, a comeback have been uh, let's see. There's still be a love story in yeah. Texas Wasteland and set in a like community the... of cannibals. Okay. First he does that. Yeah. First he does that comedy with the magicians. Then he tries to do Kick-Ass 2. And now he's trying to do this. What are you, what are you going for here, Jim Carrey? What exactly is your so... final intention? Yeah, with, uh, with, with Carrie's films as of late, I think um, uh, the one that you were talking about, the one with the magic- magician, the... Um, it seemed like it was that... going back to basics for Jim. You know? The Incredible Wonderstone. Yeah, Incredible like... Burt Wonderstone. Mm-hmm. That came out and went, and I, I, uh, I looked at one review, I was like, oh, it's got Jim Carrey. And that it's... that was the that was the extent of my of my caring, and that was uh, I, I guess I felt like well, how come this wasn't advertised any any wider? It was advertised some. And then supposedly it, it it's okay, which I guess is better than you know the usual. Yeah, it's stuff it's Jim it's, it's meh. Kind of step up, kick ass too. Yeah, Jim. Uh, I mean, it wasn't really yeah. a comedy. I had issues with it, but the issues didn't really have anything to do with Jim Carrey. Because he was barely in the movie. Mm. He's obviously trying to make a comeback. He, he wants to, to get back into the public light, try and rejuvenate his charisma and humorous reputation. But I'm not entirely sure how he plans on going about it. I'd be okay with it. I think the world needs a Jim Carrey in their lives every once in a while. Yes, absolutely. I like I love Jim Carrey. Not I, I likes think it, he can still. There's a place for his his ilk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The um. 
he's he's got uh, he's had sets on on hosting SNL in the in the past year or so. He's uh, he had Dumb and Dumber Two, which was, uh, in my opinion, at least surprisingly surprisingly amusing. Oh. Albeit, uh, it's just a, it, it's just a, copy and paste story from the original film. Dumb and Dumber too, yeah, there's that. But you see, like all the really popular comedian actors right now are either girls or generic obnoxious dude bro types, like our James Franco's and our Seth Rogens and our Jonah Hills. We, we, I'll be we, damned we, if they take over comedy. We we need another over actor, you know. <laughs> We need another comedic actor who's actually comedic in his acting. Not Thank just capable you. of saying funny sex jokes, you know? And we're not getting that from anybody. Not any of the no. old actors who did it. Not any of the new stuff. I mean, some comedic actors right now are funny. I, I, I have a soft spot for Channing Tatum, I won't lie. I have a hard mm -hmm. time getting mad at him. You know? Most of the female comedians I like right now, Rebel Wilson, Kristen Wiig, Amy Poehler. They're all right. Yeah. I don't have anything but, but, against them. But nobody's really shaking anything up by being, you know, stupid. Mm -hmm. But stupid in a fun way, not in an obnoxious way. In a way that's too detached from reality for you to get mad at it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Rebel Wilson, I think, um, yeah, if, if she's got, if she's got a, a breakout, man, I, I think, uh, coming, I, I think, uh, I, I think, uh, the Pitch Perfect stuff is holding her back. What? I love the Pitch Perfect movie, and possibly movies, depending on how good the second one is. But I love Pitch Perfect, man. That movie was adorable. And I love the acapella songs. Anna Kendrick. That's the thing. I I love I love all the elements that, that went into it. Just about. It it just seemed for me the uh I, I know it was a big hit and everything, it was just for me the, the laps were really few and far between. I thought it had some really clever dialogue in it. I thought a lot that it had the kind of smart, sort of witty writing that you see in a lot of the really good sitcoms right now, like with your Parks and Recs and your Communities, your, uh, I guess your How I Met Your Mothers, although not so much anymore. But it, it, I don't it was, watch it any of those. It, it, it was snarky writing, you know? Rebel Wilson had some funny lines. Uh, Anna Kendrick did. Elizabeth Banks and the other guy, as they were the two judges. Right. Yeah. Uh, Rebel, so Rebel Wilson did. Rebel Wilson did have funny lines. I just felt like this. Uh, um, where where have I seen this story before? Um, it, it, I, I I had just gotten off when I when I first saw Pitch Perfect. I had just freshly gotten off of watching Glee I had just gotten off of uh, um, what was uh, that, that a joyful noise and it so with this so watching Pitch Perfect it, it just it, it, it felt like uh, they were doing the same thing that was starting to irritate me about all those all those other all those other formulaic uh, song competition films, team and maybe comedies. that's not fair. Hmm. Teen comedies are in something of a dry spot right now, like teen high school comedies, you know, because everybody's so focused on making these young adult adaptations, these big epic romance action, ripping off Hunger Games and Twilight left and right. That's how people are trying to cater to the teen audience right now. Which means we're not getting a lot of the simple, relatable, we're not getting our, our John Hughes's for the 80s, or our Mean Girls's slash Clueless's slash, I don't know, Heather's Bring It On. We're not getting any of that stuff right now. So I'm glad that at least Pitch Perfect is, you know, it's something. And it's something 
it, people like. Okay. I like Anna. I like Anna Kendrick. Well, I think she's a great singer. Technically, it takes place at a college. But still. Yes. Yes, it does. Yeah. It, it, it's teen comedy-esque enough. Yeah, it's... Yeah. But the... Here, here's another thing I found fantastic. Once uh, people were were talking so much about it, they said, uh, I, I, the, the, that cup song, it, it's good. It, it's really good. I like it. But um, folks were covering it up and down YouTube. It was a big hit. And oh, yeah. they were pushing it saying, um, saying it's, uh, this is from the hit movie Pitch Perfect, and so I sit down and I watch Pitch Perfect, and it's only in one scene, and it's not the entire song. Yeah, Did exactly. Did you notice that? I noticed that. I was like, what? Well, to be fair, Make it is it. a musical, so it's going to focus on its two box hits. But it is true that Music. most teen most comedies, when they have like a hit song attached to them, like like the don't forget about me or or, or mm -hmm. stuff like that they, they they like make them the centerpiece you know they play them at the beginning and end of the movie they like focus on it make it a thing yeah unless it's a For musical the... well mu i think you mean this is this seems more like a music movie yeah but it is technically there's a has songs in it well yeah they're there's songs in it, but is they take up is the uh, is that thing you do considered a musical? I don't know what that is. You never seen that thing? Okay. <laughs> um, I can't watch everything, you know. No, no, no. Right? No, no. It's fine. I'm just, 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 just surprising. That's all. Yeah, music, music movies are are. Are movies that have music as a centerpiece, whether they're whether they're uh, uh, main, mainly if they're if they're you know characters on stage. But musicals, I usually think of uh, stuff like uh, stuff like Singing in the Rain, where they actually just you know break out of so break out in song and then out music in the middle of nowhere. Is hardly an official term. And, and nobody on, on Broadway questions whether something... Rudy McRuderson? I was talking here. Okay, go ahead. Keep going. Finish your thought. Finish your thought. A, a musical is just a, a piece of fiction. I mean, fiction with audio, obviously. A book can't be a musical. That, that incorporates songs into the story in a prominent way. Be, be it as something that because the characters are singers and they perform a lot, or something that's actually a part of the story and the plot and the characters. E either way, it still counts. Like, there's plenty of other musicals that just have the characters singing on a stage, not actually being all that related to the plot. Cabaret tried to do that, the movie version. Victor Victoria did that. Uh, maybe. They... There's a lot of blurred lines there. I'm just saying, musical is an official term, and music movie, I'm pretty sure, is not. Mm hmm. You're all blurry. Oh. Who, me? Yeah, you're all blurry. Is that just me, Mike? Is it just me? Yeah. It, it, no, it's James is blurry, actually. His webcam is, like, very blurry. You're blurry, James. Hmm. Yeah, ah, just speaking of blurred lines, ah, you said the lines are blurred there, and then your lines got blurred. It's called timing. I was expecting, uh, I was expecting that that other song to pop out there. Blurred lines. Well, we wanted to avoid that. Let's fuck that song. So mm -hmm. your camera did, your, your camera helped. Your camera avoided it. Okay, I know what I know what to do here. I'm I'm shutting off BitTorrent. Hopefully, Good. I'll come in cleaner. Oh, you say yeah. If it's something on your end, just like <laughs> eats up the webcam. 
All right, so. Whoa. All right, here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> In five, four, three, two, Fist one. Bump. Caught me off guard there. Wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. It's fine. Oh, fuck, okay. I'm now. Wait. God damn it. Hello. Sorry. Christ. Okay. 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 We're not professionals. Just do it. Don't you forget about me. As you walk on by. I actually hate that movie. But the song's good. What what movie is that anyway? What? <laughs> what? You bet you don't it. like the breakfast? I oh oh it. that movie. Oh that movie. Everything about it pisses the goddamn Fred Nelson character and his unbelievably unapologetic douchebag who gets away with everything because aw, his parents <sighs> abuse him. Let's just ignore the fact that he's terrible. Let's just pair him up with the girl he's been sexually harassing, because she just needs to lighten up. And let's just let's Quick. give the weird girl a makeover so she can be more normal and happier and date the jock. We're, we're all the same inside because we all have terrible parents. I almost thought he was... When I first saw that movie, I almost thought he was Robert Downey Jr. Like, really young. I guess not. Oh, okay. I guess I kind of see the the. Okay, yeah, I can kind of see that. Minus a lot. Wouldn't that be? <laughs> God, Robert Downey Jr. was in a lot of '80s films too. A lot of those teen drama films. He was in Weird Science, I believe, as well as a bit part. But man, Breakfast Club, that was just one of the best John Hughes films out there. Oh, it's terrible. It's tedious. It, it gives horrible lessons. God, the morals are so tough. And the characters, <laughs> we're supposed to root for them? We're supposed to find them relatable? If you find Jeff Nelson's character relatable, you might be a sociopath. Well, I found the... <laughs> I, I found the... I found the that one nerdy character the most relatable. That was me he, in high school. He had the he had the least wrong with him, you know. Like the two female characters, their writing was sexist as fuck. Like they tried to be all, oh, she's so victimized by the world because they expect things of her because she's pretty. But like, it's always it's all so confused. Like they don't actually come to any conclusions because nothing really happens in the movie. It's just them getting to know each other. And that's a, uh, and it's, and it's that's. It's not a narrative to have. You need to have higher stakes. You need to have an arc if you're going to bring out these themes. You need to do something besides romanticize them. And Judd Nelson actually needs to do something to become a better person before we start sympathizing with him and wanting him to get the girl. He can't just be a terrible human being. Say he has an abusive childhood, continue to be terrible, and then because of that abusive childhood, we're okay with it all can't do that uh, the whole the whole uh, concept of just getting to know each other even among that group was the the major tasks set forward and I guess I guess the film was not meant to be it, it was not meant to uh, to have any grand resolution to it even because it's only it's only one day. It's it only a, one day in the lives of these people. It hasn't aged yeah. well. Maybe the concept of oh we're not so different after all was new at the time. I doubt it, but maybe it was, but it's not anymore. It's been done so many times and better. Well, John Hughes originally wanted to make this like into more than that because he wanted to do a sequel like every 10 years to catch up with the characters so well, you'll be learned that Judd Nelson is an abusive husband yep that's great <laughs> so it'd be 
to be like, we'll go to see him in college, and then we'll see him as an adult. And, this wasn't but a triumphant moment. This was goddamn foreshadowing. I mean, that's actually a topic we should talk about, the John Hughes films. That's actually an interesting topic. God, I don't have to train juice to talk about Breakfast Club in that kind of capacity. Maybe I could, you don't have... I could talk about Home Alone, because I love Home Alone. I like John Hughes when yeah. he's writing characters who aren't teenagers. Because he writes the most insufferable fucking teenagers, and his morals are always so skewed for them. I guess because, you know, teenagers are supposed to like them, and teenagers don't like... I don't know. And... Good characters. And that's writes, the funny thing because what you're talking about there, he was, that's that's what people loved him for writing. That's because you he think you movie. feel like it was insufferable teenagers. I felt like, I felt like they were relatable. God. Yeah. That's the freaking chick in um, Uncle Buck. God damn, what was her fucking problem? We moved, so I'm just gonna randomly insult you, mom out of freaking nowhere, even though it's been a couple of years, because I'm just that sullen. But I'm going to get maybe, possibly, raped by my boyfriend later, or maybe I just got dumped. I don't know, it's not really clear. But the point is, I learned a lesson, Uncle Buck, and now I'm less bitchy. This is such a good moral for teen girls everywhere. I have not seen that movie in a while. It's, yeah, it's been a while since I've seen Uncle Buck. Um... I was... I mean... I... I was uh, I was feeling a little bit more along the lines of what was it, sixteen candles and Oh yeah, that uh, also that also had rabies. God damn it. <laughs> Just this is hilarious. Anything and actually anything that uh, anything that he had with the uh, the really young version of that guy from the Dead Zone T V show. Uh Oh, you're talking about Anthony Michael Anthony Hall. Anthony Michael Hall. Huh. Yeah. He's a Broadway guy. Yeah, he's grown since his uh Oh, so early early years. I mean, he, he like you should see him like a, a then and now picture like he's back then he was like a scrawny nerd, but now he's like this bulk like huge dude. It was like holy crap, he grew. Yeah, well, I think John Hughes is at his best when he's doing like was at his best, sadly, when he was doing, like, comedy. You know? Trying to be Ferris Bueller? And stuff. Yeah! Like, Ferris Bueller, none of the characters were really likable, but they didn't have to be, because it was a comedy. It wasn't like a like a, a morality tale. It, it was just funny. And Home Alone. And even some of the lesser ones in the 90s I kind of got a kick out of, like Dennis the Menace and 101 Dalmatians. I didn't mind those movies. I liked them a hell of a lot better than Breakfast Club, I can tell you that. Ugh. That's weird. He he started out doing all these all these teen comedies that that he was known for, and then yeah, he later on wrote uh, family films. Yeah, he stopped. Yeah, whoa, whoa, he stopped. He stopped directing. And I'll say that the bulk of his family films weren't very good. Lover was shit. Pretty much all the Home Alone sequels were shit. But there were some good ones in there, and I thought generally that the style was a lot more tolerable. He's good yeah. at he really, he was Eventually, good at when it came to the 90s, he was just working. Yeah. He only wrote Home Alone, period, no sequels. So people took upon themselves to write sequels to that film. Did he write Home Alone 2? Nope. Or 2, maybe. I was thinking of 3, never mind. I forgot. Wow, I forgot about 2. Such a classic. How do you oh, he... forget about 2? You know that there has to be a 2 in order to get to the 3, right? He did write wow. Home Alone 3. He did not write Home Alone 4. What about Home Alone Oh, shit. About... Okay, okay. Jada's right. All right. Uh... No, Home Alone 5 was after he died, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, it was after he died. Yeah, Jada was right with the trilogy. Home Alone 5 actually wasn't as bad as Home Alone 4 and 3. It was still bad, but it was less bad than 3 and 4. Oh, God, so... we have a remake to Vacation. Yes, that's coming. National... Yes. Vacation? Yep, there's a re <sighs> like a reboot Chevy coming. Chevy Chase will be thrilled. He loves it when people take away from his spotlight. He won't say <laughs> anything bad on Twitter at all. I can't wait. Man, oh man. Yeah, well apparently this 
it's like a continuation in a sense because apparently there's gonna be like grown up versions of the kids Does that mean... playing. Okay. So I think it's like a t continuation of the franchise, I believe. Because well, I read that. Okay, that could work. Maybe, probably not. Because I think it's, it's it's like like a continuation slash reboot of the f films. I because I think um Ed Helm is that plays one of the characters, and I think he's directing it, too, and I'm not sure. It did work for Christmas uh, Story, too. It probably won't work for Vacation, too. Stop trying to make sequels to classic Christmas films. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> to end this before they get to Scrooge. No. Oh, like, like... I don't know. What else is there to get to? They've already done Home Alone and a Christmas Story. <laughs> They're not going to do a Christmas Carol, because they can just retell a last story. That's easy. Obviously, that's been retold so many fucking times. Yeah, that's, that's an easy cow to milk. They don't need to that's... make sequels. Yeah, that's, uh... Yes, yeah, well, Scrooge... Uh, the Scrooge story is kind of like the... It, it's... No, it's... It's open, uh... I love um, Scrooge. It, I love the I love the story of the Christmas Carol. It's just anyone can do it because nobody uh, nobody owns the rights to the book anymore. I don't think everybody has done it. Literally, it's everybody. public domain. Mm -hmm. Which is why we it's haven't. Christmas. Oh, they did a Christmas Carol movie. I guarantee it. Which is why we haven't had uh, a good. A good solid adaptation since Muppet Christmas Carol. Scrooge so was on Christmas Carol, wasn't it? Huh? No, it wasn't because Bill Murray seemed too young. It was in the 80s. It was before Muppet. I, the Jim Carrey one supposedly wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't. It, it was kind of. It, it was a little bit. Not as cheerful as I'd. <laughs> As I uh, as I picture the story, Chucky e. Dickens was never the most cheerful individual. I no, but the was... story is supposed to be. Not really. Not. A it's got scary of... moments, but the Jim Carrey version plays out like a freaking horror movie. <laughs> there were goofy scenes in the trailers. What about that bit where he flies through the air and he like does this big like falling scene? And he goes. It, it's so. It, it happens in the movie, but it's overshadowed by all the scary and unnecessary shit that happens all throughout. I mean, there's no subtlety here. There, there's no subtlety in the film. Polar Express wasn't a dark Christmas movie. That was the same no. people, and that movie was impossibly schmaltzy. So I don't know what to tell you. Maybe they wanted to do something different. Make well, themselves stand out more. Did you did you see the Jim Carrey version? No, I didn't. I just saw the trailers. And the trailers seemed kinda like, you know, just a silly, fun, animated Carrey. The, the trailers tend to be misleading. The trailers show one side of it. The uh, we're talking jump scares in the movie. Uh, we're talking we're we're talking the third act of the film has a chase scene in it with uh, Scrooge almost getting run over by a carriage. For what purpose? It's exactly. In the exactly. It's in the future. He can't get touched by shit, right? Wouldn't the it, carriage it, just go through? It, it's it, it's such a it's such a random scene. The uh, there's this shadow of a death carriage that comes out of the wall and chases him down. That. The ghost of Christmas Future is is directing the carriage towards him. Okay, you want to incorporate the horror stuff, do it with the ghost of Christmas Future. But but present and past, those are the nice ghosts. Like and yet they incorporate some weird shit, and, too. And, and present is like, ho, 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 I'm too jolly. The present, the, one, the present one plays out like you would expect, although it's... Although... Uh, Jim Carrey trying playing the ghost, trying to be uh, uh, do a Ringo Starr impression is kind of weird. 
but then it ends with his his face shriveling off and turning to a skull and laughing in the camera. I mean, Scrooge had kind of a sick, gothic, sort of Tim Burton-esque sense of humor, and that played out with the ghosts to an extent, but it, it was funny, scary. It was, it was like goofy. Like, haha, there's an eyeball in the water, look at Bill Murray mug. That kind of thing. It wasn't like yeah. up scary, except maybe with the Ghost of Christmas feature, because again, you can do that. Mm-hmm. Well, the Christmas Future stuff is supposed to be scary. And the Marley stuff, too. But, um... Sometimes the Marley stuff is scary. Sometimes they make it funny, depending on the tone they're going for. I've honestly yeah. seen more funny Jacob Marleys than actual serious Jacob Marley. Maybe that's just because I keep watching children versions of Christmas Carol. Like with Statler and Waldorf and fucking Goofy. Why did... Why did Waldorf scare me as a kid? I, I can't... <laughs> <laughs> it appears in the in the doorknob like... Well, that was silly, though, because it was like, Scrooge, and it's so loud that it knocks when I came back. And somehow Michael Caine maintains his movie. God, I love that movie. Mm-hmm. It's a good one. Like I said, it was the it was the last solid interpretation in my opinion. I just don't know about that. I have to think about it. Well, we've had at least we've had about uh, twenty years worth of adaptation since then. So feel free to t feel free to correct me once you take a look at all of them. <laughs> There's a marathon. There is a marathon. Let's watch them all. Watch them all and see which one's good. It's a TV movie, Bugs Bunny's Christmas Carol, in the 2000s. And it was where, like, Daffy Duck owned a giant mall. So he was, like, this rich duck. I remember that one. Yeah, that was... Yeah, I remember that one, too. That was called something else. It was, Baham um, Duck. Yeah, that's what it was. Baham Duck. It, it, it was, was okay. It was just not solid, I should say. I mean, I'm not going to be Looney Tunes would do a good job, but... I thought I it mean... kind of... For a Looney Tunes cartoon, it kind of played up the heartwarming scenes a bit too much. Like when they showed Daffy Duck's past in the orphanage. Little baby Daffy Duck. I just want a family. Yeah. And growing up Daffy Duck is like, touching the window. It's like, really? You're Daffy Duck. Another slapstick thingy. Trying to do some serious stuff. Serious roles. Exactly. Otherwise, you guys got at least two weeks to think of your Eddie Murphy film. kind of spun off into day day camp well, i didn't see that because i'm I with uh i know better cuba gooding jr playing his character i think he plays that character or does he play a different character i have not seen it but i was like wait there's a there's like a sequel to the film why um i'm pretty sure it's he's playing the same character that eddie murphy portrayed but i'll double check right now I will, of course, be talking about uh, I Spy, because that's a film that's actually interesting to talk about. I'll either talk about Daddy Daycare or Trading Spaces, because I love Trading Spaces. Trading Spaces is such a funny movie. Oh, yeah, if you're talking about 80s Eddie Murphy, that's so, great. And Dan Aykroyd, too. Jamie Lee Curtis. Man. Oh, yeah. Yep. That era of Eddie was the best. Yep, same Hello, character. Officer. Merry Christmas. Oh, it is a sequel, okay. Oh, God. I thought it was, like, some weird... Well, I'm not talking about the sequel, because it doesn't involve Eddie Murphy. Okay. But, yeah, I, I got a, I got this, like, blockbuster DVD of I Spy. I figure I might as well talk about it. Are we going to need to talk about Shrek? Surely we've talked <laughs> about Shrek before. 
Oh yeah, of course. Uh, we talked about the sequel, Shrek 2. I I'm guessing Mulan. I'm I'm heavenly guessing on Mulan. That's my bet of what Matt picks. Yes, it'll be worth talking about because Eddie Murphy's involvement in that film is truly baffling. It is. Although he's um, he works in that role though. A little. He is still kind of out of place, and it's a like it's, it was before Shrek, and it was after Eddie Murphy had kind of like lessened in the public eye so it was like it wasn't at the height of eddie murphy's career or anything why are you here eddie murphy why are you an asian dragon i want to know that's something definitely we're talking about and that's why it's the 50th episode at 50th anniversary 50th episode of the podcast so we dedicated to eddie murphy Should maybe we... i'll sorry it should. Yeah, should be. Maybe I'll talk about Dream Girls. Oh, that'd be good. That'd be different. I mean. That'd... But wait a minute, aren't I the musical person? You don't have to be the only musical person, honey. But I want to. Uh, have you seen? Well, have you seen it? I can see it. I think I've okay. seen it. Get... I mean, it's a classic musical movie. So, you know, um, of course that's it. Sort of modern, modern classic, I guess you could modern say. Modern classic. Like, like, it's up there with, like, Chicago and, uh, I don't know, Sweeney Todd. Mamma Mia. I'm talking about I like success. Mamma Mia, too. Thank you. <laughs> How is Mamma Mia worse than Garbage Pail Kids, Rob Walker? How is that even possible? Is it because you can, are you that averse to girly things? Like, oh, bad singing. That's the worst crime of a have. What the I, fuck ever? I okay, so yeah, one's one character in there can't one one actor in it can't sing very well, but geez, what a what a backlash that movie had. not yeah. like frankly he's not the worst singer i've heard in a musical movie i don't think he's worse than russell crowe i don't think he's worse than gerard butler i mean he's definitely you know he's up there with them with the best of them but honestly i mean uh, it, it's just like a simple harmless story why would it generate that kind of hate i'm sure as hell not going to watch the nostalgia critic review and find out the answer will probably piss me off on there. Well, I enjoyed, I, I I enjoyed the review because even though, I I guess what, even though, even what exactly if he, was his thing. What 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 exactly pissed me off so much? It, it was, it it was that the fact that here is um. It, it was the same problem that that everyone I every guy that I talked to had about the film is that it's uh, it it feels it it feels something that like it's something that's that's way too quote unquote girly and that it's offensive to the uh, it's offensive to the whole label of being a chick flick because it doesn't have any it has just girliness to it and not much substance that is some bullshit that's like saying com that commando is an insult to male movies which is just just because it doesn't have much substance uh, not all movies why can't girls have a movie with little substance you know girls just want to have fun right and who are guys to say that a movie is insulting as a chick flick that's what I want to know. Guys are critics too, I guess. But, uh... I don't understand how a movie is worse than Garbage Pail Kids because it's too girly. That that seems a little bit insulting. But whatever. I mean... Uh, I... I, I 
I've taken issue with a lot of things that the Walker brothers have said of late, like this past year or so. I don't even know. I I still enjoy I I still enjoy some of uh, the Nostalgia Critic episodes, even if I don't agree with his opinion on the film. There's a difference but, between uh, agreeing with an opinion and just like you're saying mean things, dude. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's why reviewers have their own opinions on movies. The one thing that I the one yeah, thing that's that not I'm what I'm saying, Mike. I'm sorry, the... James. I keep interrupting you, but my issue is not that I've been disagreeing with his opinions on movies. That is not the problem. It's much more than that. Okay, okay, gotcha. Mm-hmm. It's more than that. All right. Gotcha. Uh, the only th- the one thing that I'm most glad about his more recent stuff is that is that he actually seems a lot more honest. Um, and I say that because you know he looks back on uh, he he did he did um, episodes commentary episodes where he looked on older stuff and he said you know what this uh, in actuality, I felt like this wasn't so bad. I just felt like, you know, I have this caricature that I put on, and uh, that's what that's what comes through. So, in recent in recent years, though, he's he's sort of backed down at just bashing the heck out of something for being weird, or, and it seems more he's he's leaned towards. Okay, what actually tries to make this work and what what doesn't? No, instead he bashes on movies for being girly. Don't even get me started on the Sailor Moon thing. That's all I'm gonna say. Don't even talk to me about that. I won't. Ugh. Nope, I won't. I I have not... I have no interest in Sailor Moon, so I won't. Uh, yep. Yeah. <sighs> Other than that, that should be it for. Uh this recording so uh we'll be chatting with you guys within at least two weeks you know figuring out what movies we're talking about and scheduling the same old shit we'll be in touch we'll be in touch it's been surreal it's been so real you guys it's almost unreal seriously james finish boondock saints like what are you even doing Come on, the, end, the third act is the best part. I'll I'll make it. I'll make sure he watches. I have the DVD. I'll I'll do a screen with them. Don't, It'd be my job to do that for you. Don't fall asleep, James. <laughs> don't do a sleeping solo. I will, I will come at you, Freddy Krueger style, if you even think about falling asleep. <laughs> don't okay. try me. Okay. Okay. Ciao for now, y'all. Ciao for now. That's a great ending. That's a great fucking ending. (laughs) Oh, man. And stop recording.